let's see what happened. <laughs> So, a lot of people may not know that you can kill those orcs in the armor, but unlike the other orcs that you come across, arrows do not kill them, it only stuns them. But if you put a bomb on them while, while they are stunned, then they will die. So, like all the vegetation has been <coughs> destroyed, ripped down. Don't really see what the point was of putting a rock here because there's no vine to climb. Now, earlier in the game, if you didn't know about the brown vine to climb, you probably would have came to this house. Well, that's an unusual glitch. Go ahead. Nobody caught that, but the message remains the same from uh, when you came here earlier. It says pass obstructed explosion clear. So once you get the bombs, some people might actually come here first, but they won't make it very far. As this house contains absolutely nothing but a bunch of these purple blocks Without having the ability to move these blocks, you're not going to be able to really do a whole lot. If you suck at use <coughs> using this ability. There we go. Choking on the, the lack of beer that I have in my mouth right now. So then you light the fireplace. The path is revealed. So again, this is a dungeon that would have really benefited from having floor markers. Otherwise, it's a little bit difficult to understand what's going on. So yes, yeah, so what we're dealing with here is an enemy that is invulnerable, can turn invisible, is what we know so far. Arrows lead to surface entrance. So if you follow the arrows, it will... All of these center areas are filled with water, and you get to the top, and basically you just, you will not be able to proceed any further because water will be in your way. So you see another orc, we think we're going to take him out like we did those other orcs, like... actually the invisible guy. Spoiler, he's a shapeshifter as well. So 
now we really get to see how powerful this ability is because when you typically use it, you use it on a gigantic rectangular block that only moves one space, but now you use it on a purple sphere and you can just roll it straight across the room. You can grab things from pretty decent range, but you can still push it as if it was a pushable thing. So normally that would be how you would move objects, but you've got that. Yeah, that's what I thought. Our friend is back. So we're wanting to push that sphere through the whole various holes in the floor. It doesn't actually matter which ones you do. You could push it in this one. You just want it to drop to the lowest floor possible. That's the name of the game here. So this is also where it'd be super neat to have a map of the dungeon and floor markers. So like when we first walked in, there were not two spheres on this floor. And I walked the sphere into that room and pushed it down. I chose that room because there's another hole in that room to push it down, rather than this room, where the sphere would have just fell in that room. Then I'd have to move it to this room. So it doesn't matter. But what we do know is that one of these spheres is not real. It's obviously this one. I'll uh, show you why it is we are doing this. Ooh, that scared me a little. So if you follow the arrows, it will go up. But right here, you go down these stairs. We push the sphere into this room, which is the lowest room. The only room it can even fall into. And we're going to want to relocate this onto this pressure plate. So we need another one. We need two spheres, then we can activate the switch. So again, pushing the ball into this hole would be perfectly valid. It would just... possibly take a little bit longer once you go to the floor below. Stairs. I want to go downstairs. And that's another thing too. Is I'm extremely consistent with this in the game. Is when you see a flight of stairs that are going up, you're going upstairs. And when you see stairs that are going down, you're going downstairs. That's always true. Holy 
shit that actually just scared the shit out of me. Oh, go away. Oh, this motherfucker. I'm actually gonna die. magic stones in place. Or soon to be, anyway. <laughs> Kaboom. Now with both pressure switches, pull the lever, it drains all the water into this chamber to the left. See the water is gone and the path is clear to walk. But I am gonna go over here and save. I mean heal and save. Cause that got a little intense. I did not remember any of that. And that's the smart way to get to the fireplace, not the way I did it before. So that's fine, you can drain the water, it will still be drained. So now it's just, you follow the arrows. You got rid of the obstruction. a uh, arrow because I'm assuming that players will try and kill him and shoot him but I didn't do that this one's real fun and spooky he mimics you to save, but, yeah. Got fucking wrecked. <laughs> so at this point, if you haven't figured it out already, he explains that the uh that shrine up there, you plug three key shards into it and then it takes you to somewhere safe. That's where the human survivors went. 
you should mostly know this by now. So we got the three key shards, one from the um, octopus boss, one from the slime one-shot boss, and one from the ghost boss. a uh, hideous looking castle in the sky. Could definitely have been made to look nicer than this. It's comforting to walk past like a bunch of uh, non-talkative enemy looking guys. Shocker. This was all a trap. This is infamously the hardest part of the game, probably. I don't remember the last time I saved, but I'm willing to bet that I don't do this in my first try. It's that difficult. The idea here is, um, you have to sneak past these robotic guards in these really, really tight corridors and find these switches to these doors so that you can advance further into this castle. It is hellish. Especially if you don't know where the fuck the switches are to these doors. that light touches you, you were caught. This is not like the orcs before. The entire game has been training you for this moment of bullshit. Oh god. Oh no. No. Okay. Whew. Holy shit. That was pretty much like the hardest segment. If I get caught now, I, my soul will actually be crushed. No. Please, just go to the end of the fucking hallway. Yes, no. End of the hallway? All the deep, yes. My mind control powers are working. So, blue switch. 
was probably the hardest switch to get. From here, it's not as punishing to get caught. In fact, let me just show you what it looks like. You get caught, you get put back in this room, but the idiots don't reset the switches that you hit. So you can kind of view it as being a a run for each switch, in a sense. So that was where I got caught, right there, top left. So the blue door is going to take me down here and out anyway. No. Do not catch me. Why do I not just leave? Because these guys are right here. <sighs> Reminds me of guard duty. They can still get you through the wall. It really is wherever that light touches. So, oh my. Just walk straight down. My mind control powers. Oh, another blue door that is now open. So it helps to remember the color of switch you hit and go through those doors. This is kind of a tricky segment right here. Oh, jeez. Do not turn. Thank you. So yeah, it would be extra frustrating if you didn't know where the switches were, because... Yeah. Getting caught is real easy. And every time you get caught, you may have noticed my health is dropping. They get you, they beat you, they throw you back in the confinement room. Now with the red switch flipped, you can go back this way. And you... oh, Jesus. Yeah, fuck you too. Yep, like I was saying, it is that easy. I need to actually smarten up here and uh, not get caught again because I might actually lose. And I actually did like the hardest parts of it. time in the game, well, I guess that's not completely true, but this is the first time in the game that it will prompt you to save. I would definitely do that if you got past this point.
boss fight number five. things he puts out on the side of him just kind of fucks up your positioning and lines you up to get hit by the black orbs. So if you find yourself you can't move into him to set a bomb, it's probably because oh, there's a purple thing there. second boss that I made, actually. So you see, you've hit him enough times with your bombs to blow his armor off. It's kind of the same idea as the octopus, I guess. Just in the nick of time, you get teleported out of there. So then he teleports you to the base of the mountain. But I'm gonna go back in to actually save.